Hello my friends, Scanner Danner here. Caleb Danner behind the camera. Thank you Caleb for being here today. I'm a little bit uh, overwhelmed at the moment because we have a ton of work to do. I'm not really sure how we're gonna do this. If we're gonna do every car separate, I'd like to do that. It's more beneficial for everyone if we can do it that way. But let me give you a rundown. <clears throat> Chevy truck, misfire, AC job. Lincoln something or other, no start, anti-theft system related. Mitsubishi Eclipse, air conditioning problem. Uh, Dodge Durango down there, air conditioning problem. The white Cadillac next to it, where those two gentlemen are walking, is a no start, no, that's a power steering, electronic power steering system problem piece of crap uh, dump truck sitting right here the white one had some kind of electrical uh, fire uh, we need to look at that and I think I feel like I'm missing one still anyway I feel a little bit overwhelmed it would be cool what I was thinking about turning the camera on it'd be cool if we just keep this live the whole time and we just go through the cars and maybe I don't give you as much detail I don't know if that's gonna work either but Let's start with this Chevy truck. Uh, it's a Chevy truck. What year, what engine, not sure yet. It's a 2004 5.3. So uh, apparently has a running problem and an air conditioning problem. Let's get the scan tool connected, see what codes we have. Uh, Pete had mentioned a lean condition maybe. I don't know, let's see, or a misfire. All right, we got a whole bunch of codes here on this truck. O2 fault codes, lean system bank one, engine miss, torque converter clutch, cylinder miss, bank one. So uh, my first step in this one is um, let's just start it up, look at our fuel trim data and see what it looks like. And uh, we could pull up freeze frame data, but I don't, I don't really need it. It's not really gonna make this any faster. So I'm just gonna start this. Look at our uh, short-term fuel trim up top, bank one and bank two. We're reading minus. It's weird. We had lean codes, not rich codes. Check that out. Oh yeah, bank one, sensor one. Wait, I need to configure this. We're, we're missing possibly an event right now. Yeah, bank one, sensor one showing full rich. Fuel trim is minus. That is one weird looking O2 pattern. Look at that. That's crazy. You feel how rough that was running while wow, the fuel trim was minus 23. That's telling me the computer's taking fuel away that it shouldn't be. So right off the bat, th that's suggesting to me some type of oxygen sensor problem. Bad input equals a bad output. And look at this sensor. Look how weird that signal looks. We'll, I'll pull up uh, bank two here in a second. I just, I don't want to miss this opportunity to show this. Look at that, it's so weird. Look at it now, it's like almost, almost dead in the water. I believe what we just saw would be why we have misfire code. So everything's gonna be centralized around this bank one sensor, one O2 sensor. We had uh, random misfire. I thought there was maybe one said misfire on startup, not important, but everything was related to bank one. You know, of course the random misfire could be anything, but I think the misfire code we had, uh, let me, see, I don't wanna go back and read the codes again. I don't want to lose this data. Let's pull up the rest of the O2s. In particular, the upstream on bank two. You see how different that is. 
Look at my trim on bank one's now 25%. It's now stinking. I can smell this. You smell how bad the exhaust is now? Now we're over fueling. We were under fueling before when it ran real rough. Now we're over fueling. Why? Because the O2 is pretty much stuck lean. This just looks like an O2 fault. The weirdness of it for me was the up down, the rapid up down of that signal when, when this car was first started at the beginning of the frames. My short term for bank two. Let's get our bearings here. Bank one is my concern, of course. See the O2 signal down here for bank one and then I want to look at the downstream on bank one bank one sensor two look at it's fixed rich my command for my trim yeah we were at positive 31 percent on frame 900 so looking right here frame 900 look at frame 900 on the downstream um, is reading full rich and our upstream is reading reading lean so this right off the bat is a faulty o2 now the question is where's all this noise coming from and also um uh, i guess my concern with that is maybe the wiring's uh touching on the on the engine block or, or frame or something like that this is a faulty upstream o2 sensor for bank one this will be an easy one caleb uh, in spite of all the codes that were in here uh, i believe this will be an easy one so bank one, this is a Chevy, goes one, three, five, seven. So cylinder one is here. And this would be, I'm talking to Caleb too. That makes this bank, bank one, wherever cylinder number one is, is where bank one is. Bank two, which would be on this side is two, four, six, eight. Uh, a common misconception would be where number two cylinder is, is where bank two is. Not the case because Ford would number bank one, one, two, three, four. So cylinders one and two are on the same bank. So bank two is not where number two cylinder is. Bank two is just simply the opposite side of bank one. We are working on this side of the engine right here. Bank one is right here. And I want my upstream O2 on bank, bank one. Again, looking at my trim numbers, look at my short terms at positive 48%. Don't even worry about the long term right now. We are maxed out though. If you want to look at it, we're at 25% on bank one. And then you see the downstream sensor is full rich. We're full rich on that downstream sensor. Looks like some activity going on in there, but that can certainly be contaminants. And my upstream sensor is pretty much, I would call that, I don't want to call that dead because there is some activity but it's staying below 450 millivolts so anything below 450 millivolts and the computer is going to add fuel i think the the interesting part is when we first started this is all of that up down activity right there it's just it looks like it looks like some kind of a wiring problem or something feeding back into this o2 signal and you see that same frequency down in here interesting all right i want to do an eyeball of where this sensor's at let me get my light my my big larry light <laughs> my wife bought this for me because she knows my my love of led lights we got this from what batteries plus some batteries so. it's magnetic it just needs to have some other magnets on the side but 600 lumens i think it was caleb 400 lumens I forget. That's after the cat. Can't even see it. Of course, it's in a location and I can't really get to. I hate to tell Pete to just put an O2 in this on bank one. That's what I want to tell him to do. But I really got to check that wiring back there just based on the frequency of this signal. That up down frequency kind of glitches we're looking at is concerning to me. Let me turn the key off. The frequency is gone on that O2, the up downs of that signal as soon as I shut the car off. 450 millivolts is my bias. I wonder, I wonder if that wire isn't rubbing on the exhaust. 
Um, I got to crawl underneath, Caleb. It's kind of sucks. I'm going to go get some cardboard from Pete. You're not going to be able to. Okay. All you missed, sorry I didn't bring you underneath with me. There's no room under there at all, even for me to do what I did. I just unplugged the oxygen sensor on bank one. And what we're looking at on the scan tool here in this area, this 450 millivolt signal, um, my thoughts are I'm going to start this. I want to make sure that I don't see those uh, frequency type signals in this with it unplugged. And if I don't, I'm just calling a bad O2. We'll be done with that part. So let's see what it does. Yeah, so notice how steady that O2 sensor signal is right now. That looks good. That's what I want to see. Um, I'm going to go down and unplug or plug that back in again while this is here. All right, so plan is to plug this back in. There we go. We're now plugged in. Those uh, up down oscillations aren't really there anymore. Just from tugging on the O2 itself, that can happen. Faulty O2 is the call here, guys. Again, we used the downstream O2, compared it to the upstream as confirmation. I just didn't like those spikes. Let's just watch it for another minute. see how it reacts sometimes moving the O2 harness I'm plugging it plugging it back in you can wake up a sensor yeah you see fuel trim is counting up again the short term that's a lean signal on that O2 but we're not lean see the downstreams full rich no reason to add propane, snap the throttle. I can use my downstream sensor to say that is a faulty upstream O2 sensor. And you saw the location of where we are. Yes, to be one, absolutely 100% checking uh, heater circuit, checking sensor ground, uh, all important stuff. But this is one I'm rolling the dice on. I don't really feel like I am I'm putting an O2 on this bank one. As far as our drivability problem goes, that's gonna take care of it. I'm happy with that. Let's go back to our uh, fault codes. Again, let's make sure that we're covering all of our bases. So that's gonna take care of our P0131, our P0134, our P0171. Uh, it's also gonna take care of, in my opinion, the engine misfire because we're over fueling sometimes and we're under fueling other times. Torque converter clutch brake switch, not worried about that, has nothing to do with what we're doing. The P1133, uh, bank one, sensor one insufficient switching, it'll take care of that. So that's one, two, three, four, five of the codes. And I also believe this cylinder misfire code that's showing in the ABS module, it's gonna take care of that too. Uh, that code, I would need to research a little bit more. It's just weird the way it's worded. Not worried about it. Upstream O2 on bank one is what I'm gonna tell Pete to do to this truck. 
And uh, next up is, uh, let's do the air conditioning now. All right, so as I'm getting these gauges set up for the AC system, some of you guys are maybe thinking about the frequencies of that O2. And to be honest with you, I don't have an answer for you as to why it would do that. With the engine running, um, I'm sure it was, you know, timed with exhaust pulses of cylinder firings and just a faulty sensor. Something inside that sensor failed. That's the short answer as to what you were looking at. I have no problem making a call on an oxygen sensor on this truck. Uh, as far as the heater circuit goes, if the heater circuit was inactive, it would not react that way. Number one, it, re it would react a little bit different, um, being that this sensor is close to the exhaust manifold. Eventually, it would have created a good signal. The other thing that tells me not to worry about the heater circuit is how fast that oxygen sensor produced voltage. So I started it right away. We are at 1100 millivolts. That doesn't happen unless the heater circuit's working. Sensor ground, we could argue that the sensor ground uh, should be checked, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue with that. Um, just it has to do with location of where we are and time and um, how often do we see just a faulty sensor ground on an oxygen sensor? Almost never. I have seen it, I have seen it, but it, it doesn't react like that. What will happen with a faulty sensor ground is your signal voltage will be biased on the high side in my experience. Um, variables to that as well, but. All right, air conditioning. Doing some AC work on this truck. Standard practice for me. Let's get our manifold gauges connected. And there is nothing in this system. It's completely empty. So what we need to do is tell Pete that this thing is empty and make him put an, bring an airline up here for us and then we'll air charge this and see if we can find a leak. So I need to get air up here so we can charge it or I need to put it down there. Maybe okay. I could do that. Either way. Um, you think you get an airline up here? Uh -huh. we have a That'd be sweet. Much. That and I need a rubber tipped blow nozzle so I can put air in the system. Um, it needs a bank one sensor, one oxygen sensor on this side, the upstream on this side. Okay. It's causing your lean codes, it's causing the misfire, over fueling, under fueling, all done by that O2, okay? okay? So once I get air up here, then I can air charge it and we'll figure out where our leak's at and we'll go from there.